Can you guys see this okay? You can okay. It looks dark from here, but maybe it's one. What's that? On the lights. Welcome everybody. On the lights here? Yeah. See preset one. Preset one. Does that do it? And it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> It'll at least change the lights a little. Okay. And get started and if others join us and they join us i'll just do a quick intro and uh, i'm allison caravan i'm senior director of annual giving and advancement relations thank you all for being here with us this weekend at Falcon weekend um we're so excited the weather is great we have a huge crowd so thanks for taking the time out and for joining us um for anyone who's joining us virtually i will be monitoring the chat so if you have questions or if things come up i'll be there um, to help facilitate um but otherwise i'm going to turn it over to the fabulous lynn wolf who is a lecturer in the accounting department and she is also a double falcon so and okay. so I just realized I didn't set one oh, thing, yeah. so I was like, uh oh. Get that set. Come on in. Grab a seat. I'm not used to having so much great help that came in. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness, IT was here and everything. Oh, the cookies? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay, I just had to get my technology set up in the background there. Welcome, everyone, um, to Bentley on Falcon Weekend. And um, excited because I'm excited because I get to change from being a faculty to an alumni to a faculty and jump back and forth. But uh, welcome you here today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about business and accounting. I promise it's going to be gentle and light and you can come and have cookies at any time. My classroom is usually an open door and, um, you know, and, and since we're on a Friday afternoon and this is all family and friends, um, feel free to, to grab any anything that you like. So, um, oops, no, my, uh, no. Oh, and I have to share my screen. Thank you. The, by the way, this happens in class too. There's always the students that help you out. We are truly a family here. She might be able to help you. <laughs> Absolutely. She works in the CPP. So. Awesome. Well, yeah. Oh. Then. <laughs> there we go. We are sharing and. We are going, he showed me the new button, but I'm, I'm going to go to slideshow mode. All righty. Now I'm getting everything going. Okay. Oh, good. Here we go. So um, we'll do a little bit of introductions here between all of us. Um, I'll talk a little bit about business and accounting, and we'll do a little classroom work. And then uh, I know there was a couple questions about our new course that we're going to teach. So um Want you to just kind of know what we're what the students, um, incoming students now and in the future are going to kind of be seeing in the world of accounting and general education. Um, that's going to set everything up for them in their careers here at Bentley. So my background is um, first and foremost, I'm a double falcon, uh, which means I got my bachelor's degree in accounting here and my master's degree. Uh, I got an MBA. So at the technical aspects of accounting and then want to get a little more understanding in the business world than that. Um, I did the traditional route at that time, which was to become a CPA, but the accounting field has, um, and, and you know, I, I'll tell you what I did after that, but the accounting field has grown so much now. There's so many avenues that it's exciting to, um, if I could do it over again, there's like 17 other things I do in addition to what I do. It's, it's just incredible. But I am a CPA um, that helps me kind of uh, guide students here who want to be CPAs as well. We do a lot of advising. But my career, um, when I did a little bit of public accounting, I got out into the business world and I worked a lot at um, startup companies. I worked in security software. I worked in education technology. You can see a pattern how I get back to Bentley. Um, and then I had a chance to teach here as an adjunct in 2018. And um, I did it. I thought I'm either going to be really nauseous or I'm going to love it. And I loved it. And I haven't turned around. I doubled down. I asked our department chair at the time to please, 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 please hire me. And I got hired full time. 
um, quit my job, took double down, came here, begged him. He hired me. And um, it was in January of 2020. So, so it's like, oh, if you go work in academia, once you get, you know, established in that, you know, it's, it's a normal job and world and everything. And of course, what happened after January 2020 was COVID. And since then, everything I've done as a startup company has been uh, come back to help me here. I've learned new technologies. I've learned how to do different modalities. Um, we've learned how to work with students in that. So um, and different things and helping. So it's really been like a big family effort to kind of get ourselves to and through COVID and that. Come on into my bed. Okay, no worries. <laughs> There's no late penalties. Um, so now I'm a lecturer in the Department of Accounting, and my goal is really this. Um, I've done full circle. I came here. I sat in these classrooms. Well, actually, I'm, I'm old enough that I was this classroom wasn't here, but I've sat in a lot of these classrooms that I teach in, and my goal is to take all that I've learned in the real world, as we call it, and bring it into the classroom so that when you read something in the textbook, you have a little bit more than just, oh, I'm reading a textbook. Here's a concept, but how is it really used? And the more stories we tell and the more that we kind of apply these things, the more engagement we get with students. And it's pretty, it's pretty great to see from this end of the, the classroom. Without saying I'm a big Falcon fan, if anybody gets a chance on Sunday, go ice skating. Um, it is, that's my godson. I'm hoping he's gonna be the class of 2036, which is coming up faster than I think. That's an old picture. He's now like up to here and he's a goalie and a player, so. Anyway, big fan, and I'll do anything for my students, and I really mean that. Um, I put my money where my mouth is, and uh, if they need anything, I'm here for them. So um, I wanted to get a little bit of background on you, and there could be people on, on Zoom uh, that we can't see in the, in the webinar, but um, what I'd like to do is have you do a little bit of technology, what we do in the classroom. So if... Um, you go to, I got to set this up. This is where I don't do these as often, but um, let's see, I need to activate my poll. Okay. So if you go to um, type this into your Safari or whatever, um, poll, it says pollev.com backslash Lynn Wolf. Three questions are going to be asked. What is your Bentley affiliation? I believe it's going to be, are you a parent? Are you a student? Are you an alumni? Where is home? Um, generally, you don't have to give me your address. I promise I won't come visit you for dinner or anything. And then finally, what is your professional background or area of interest? So if students are in here, what's your area of interest? Professional background, what do you do? This kind of starts the uh, the whole thing going. You like my other category? Anybody just happens to come in? You know, <laughs> if you're more in one category, I don't know. I don't think you can pick one, but pick the one you're most closely aligned. So my work's cut out for me here. I have a lot of parents. I have to impress and I, I will, I will try. I promise your students are in good hands. And yes, this is good use of their cell phones in class, by the way, so. <laughs> oh, students are going down. Okay. Okay, so this is where we're going on uh, where pe what people are. So I've got a lot of parents in here, some students, some alumni. Oh, even more parents. Whoop, look at that. Are we looking for dinner? Oh, that's a really good place. Yes, very good place. <laughs> I miss, I lived in Walton for a long time. I moved out into a town that doesn't have a lot of things. And I'm like... <laughs> I miss them. All right. So it looks like we got lots of parents here. I will cater to parents, students, alumni, and faculty staff. <laughs> um, going on to, let's see what else we have. 
So where is home? It looks like Belmont, New York as in York, UK, right? Not New York. That's not you, it is not. Okay, um, Burlington, Brooklyn, Newburgh. I think Newburgh is in New York. Ah, very good, <laughs> I'm good guess. Okay. Awesome. London, is. you're from London. Yeah. Got it, okay. Awesome, Quincy. So we got people from all over. That is excellent, so. And what's your, um, your professional background and interest? Looks like um, we got some people in the MBA program. Um, DE and I, who, who's the cooking professional? No, I, I won't disclose you. <laughs> it's you guys. Oh, no. <laughs> Excellent. CPA controller, MBA candidate like that. Um, that's, that's kind of my background, if I can help in any way. Electrical engineer. We have a lot of different talents here. So some people okay. are going to know a little bit about accounting. Uh, some people law and management. And some people will will not know some, but that's okay. I'm going to make sure everybody is uh, is equal here. Education, excellent. All right. So we'll do um, as students will know here. We'll do things like polls like this. We'll do cahoots, which are you know kind of competitions. We'll do games and that. Uh, just trying to whether we want to gain information, want to see what students know, kind of take a tip back on that. So let me kind of get back to my little slideshow here. So um, what I want to do to explain for you know people who are in accounting and people who are um, trying to get to understand what do we do here at Bentley. Um, Bentley was founded on the principles of accounting um, in 1917. Um, by the time I got here, um, accounting had still been like the number one, but we've grown. We were Bentley College at the time, and now we're Bentley University. So there's so many more different um, majors and, and interests that people can pursue that it, that it just totally excites me. I got to think about if I can take a class again. If I can ever stop teaching, I want to take a class again. So there's so many great things and opportunities here. So I want to give you kind of a 360 view of what we, you know, what that leaves founded on, what we teach in accounting and what we try to tell students. So I'm taking like an, a good chunk of the class and kind of lumping it into just um, my top five things. So the first thing we always say um, when we do this in our introductory classes is we say that, and if anyone has not heard this before, it's said a lot that accounting is the language of business. It's the foundation for, um, if you're building a house and your house is your business, your personal life or whatever, the foundation is what you're building. And we teach them how that is. If you don't have a good foundation, uh, the house might not be so stable on the top part. So any business, any um, family household or the like, has to kind of know that. Now, the American Accounting Association drew this little cartoon, and um, we always show this in class, and it's almost like ink blots. Tell me what you think this says. So I'm going to ask the class, what do they think this says? What does this mean? And I don't know, you might have seen it before, right? You have not. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's that's me. That's it. Down to the front. No, really kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, can I make it bigger? Let's see. I do this sometimes. Oops. Let's see. I don't think I can in slideshow mode, can I? No. Oh, there we go. Okay, now. Now, what do you think it says? What does the picture on the left say? And what is the picture? It's kind of like Peanuts cartoons, right? You can kind of follow them through. Maybe a lot of different information goes in and um, you kind of figure out a way how to organize it and analyze it. Right. It's like this guy's doing right here with this green shade, right? Everyone thinks accountants wear green shades. I never had one. So that's a misnomer. I don't think we wear those anymore. Um, but he's putting all the information in there, right? Working really hard to kind of get out. So assets and liabilities, we'll talk about that in a second. But we create these financial statements and we create results for people, right? That looks hard. What do you think the right side says? But you get something for saying about the left side. So we have a little <laughs> pride. <laughs> Um, so you have to interpret the data. Um, it's not it's on, not all black and white. There's a lot of gray. Um, you have to make judgment calls, things like that. Exactly. 
You must be my CPA controller, right? No, <laughs> no, but you're very good. That's awesome. I like it. You are. Uh, oh, that's a, well, a lot of accountants. It's looking at all those spreadsheets, right? I, I always say translating numbers into English and what it means for your business. So exactly. You but have to use the info to make good decisions. And if you don't have good info, you can't make good decisions. Exactly. I know you got one. So. <laughs> Here's the first one in class. You put that one. So there you go. All right. Exactly. So this is maybe way a long time ago, there was this guy cranking this through and making this happen, right? But um, now with automation, with um, analytics, with computers and technologies, that's not me anymore. It, I, I use um, what I know and the foundation that we learn here to put these things together in systems and, um, and, and, and do all of this analysis. So stuff comes out of this process, which is all automated now, comes out here. And what we're trying to do is provide good information, useful information for companies so that they can make good decisions. And in the past two years, companies have really had to make good decisions. They've had to pivot on a dime. Um, I use the example in class about the Titanic, right? You know, I, and some of them, the movie's so old that they weren't born then, but the one with Leonardo DiCaprio and he's, he's you know, the person's up in the, the crow's nest and he's going, iceberg, dead ahead. And uh, they try to turn the ship and they can't turn the ship and it scrapes and that, right? You have to be able to pivot. You need this information. You need that guy up there looking for the iceberg. If he hadn't been, they really would have hit it. So a lot of things that happen here is you need to have this visibility. If we tell the students, or I tell them that you're driving a car, that information on the left is what you see in the rear view mirror, what the company did. It's like an archeological dig. It's all that information and what the company did and all that information together helps you then where you've been tells you where you're going and you're looking out the windshield and you're trying to say, is there a pothole? Did someone step on the brakes? What's happening? And how quickly do I need to pivot my business? So we tell them that there were a lot of things here. And I promise this is a joke for adults. I wouldn't say this in class. We don't teach them the movie Shades of Grey. This is different areas that we have to worry about. Um, you know, like there are things that we can be a little more aggressive in accounting that are business decisions. Um, but you don't cross that line into, you know, where it's very dangerous, illegal. Um, not, I, my boss used to say, I don't look good in orange. Mm -hmm. So we try, you know, with the accounting department and the accounting profession is held to a high economic standard. So we kind of just say there's more than just that. And um, I'm going to show you that, you know, the language of business really helps um, you know, companies make that happen. So we're going to make the business decisions. We're going to be a business partner and a lot of startups that I've been in and, and you know, as being a controller, you're at the management table and you're the expert in the financials trying to tell, you know, this is what I see. And they don't always like to hear that news, do they? No, nope. I've uh, been called the speed bump to revenue because I say you can't recognize the revenue. You can't do this, but you're the expert and you have to be able to make that happen. But you build that credibility and you tell your managers who aren't experts in your area um, what, what you need to do. Um, every part of the company uses it. I tell the students, you give me a career and I'll tell you how accounting is used somewhere, somehow in your job. Um, when you go out and you work in with different departments, you kind of can see that happen. Oops, I quick trigger here. The second thing I say is accounting provides you with a tool chest of knowledge. So everything that we give you in accounting, and, and hopefully you even have a tool chest for everything you get at Bentley, um, is a tool that you put in there. And if you were going to hang up a picture or um, you were going to, um, you know, build a table or something like that, you use certain tools. And you might not use all the tools, but you have them there in case. And that's what we do in classes. We'll build some of the tools that we talk about in our classes are financial statements. We tell you how they're put together, and then we tell you how to interpret them with ratios. Um, we look at things called budgets and forecasts, which tells us what do we think the business is going to do in the future. The thing I'm going to kind of point out, I always say to students, cash flow. And as you know, I say, if we run out of gas, right, we're, we're, we might as well close the company up. We need enough cash. We have to plan ahead. And um, we want to make sure we have all of this stuff so we can make great decisions for our company or reactive decisions. And then um, we talk about something called internal controls a lot more in some of our other courses. But you have to have um, good 
practices, policies, procedures, and that make your company sound incredible. And if you're a publicly held company, you really need a lot of those. So as your companies get bigger and grow, you put these good practices in, it gives the, the investing community um, confidence in what you do. But I also say that no one tool will determine your answer. So you may get an answer you love. You don't just take the first tool. I love the answer, I'm gonna go with it. You might look at a couple other tools and see what the consensus is telling you, whether we should buy this company, whether we should um, you know, pick this investor to join us, um, whether we should sell something, um, go into a new market. A lot of these decisions, we pull all of this information together. I talked about technology in the past. This is how we felt. Piles and piles of bills, um, invoices and that, and you just felt buried. You're looking through paperwork trying to, it looks like you've, uh, <laughs> you've been here, huh? I'm locked up. Yep, exactly. So, you know, uh, in the past, there's all that stuff. You're trying to create audit trails. You're trying to figure out what's going on with the business. But what we show our students is that with technology, with analytical tools, um, we can actually take that information. You don't have to worry about spending five hours trying to sort that pile of paper. You have everything digitally and you can analyze them. And we start with um, Excel and then we have other courses. We have the expert right here with Professor Gray who can tell, I could have her do a whole thing on Python, Alteryx, Tableau and R. And um, these are a lot of tools that students will get exposure to um, in, their, in their disciplines throughout um, the category. Any comments on technology? Professor Gray? I guess the one comment I will make is not to be intimidated when you see Python and R up there because uh, tools like Alteryx and Tableau are low code, uh, which means that you do not have to know how to code. If you know snippets of code, just three lines, if you can code three lines of code and stick it into Alteryx, then suddenly you become as powerful as a programmer. It's amazing. It is amazing because uh, Professor Gray taught me because uh, in, in the business world, we didn't have as many fun tools as we do here at Bentley and as the world is getting right now. So um, I took a course in Alteryx and it's a lot of drag and drop. How do I want to sort this data? What do I want to look like look for? And, um, you know, some of our students go heavy into data analytics. Um, we will kind of just, um, depending on the major the student is, you know, touch upon these things to know these exist. Yes, we don't expect anyone to do this, but I'll tell you as a hiring manager, Bentley students have the have the, the goods and the technology behind them when you hire them compared to where I've seen in other universities um, that they've got what it takes to kind of come in and hit the, hit the ground running. They, may, they don't have to be a programmer or maybe they use one versus the other, but it's okay as long as they're familiar with things. Um, you know, they, they're very technologically advanced in what they've done just from phones and any of the things that they've used. So a lot of my students do gaming and they've got these huge PCs when they, I mean, uh, laptops when they come in. It's amazing the analytical abilities and technological abilities our students have. And we just try to kind of map that and make that happen with them. So the other thing we tell them is something you can't learn in a textbook. But really uh, what I've learned out of business is trust your gut, your common sense, your critical thinking skills. You, you, I, you, I say to the students, you come into this university, you have what it takes. All we need to do is fine tune it. We'll give you some of the um, you know, aspects of the, of the knowledge, but I tell them trust your gut, your mind and your heart and you'll never go wrong. But when you look at this, Think outside the box. Don't just trust what you see on a paper. Trust but verify. Understand it. Does it make sense? So um, if you're making a decision, what's happening inside your company or inside your household, if you're doing this personally? What's outside? What's going on in the economy? Does it make sense for me to buy a house right now if interest rates are going up? Can I do that? What are the costs and the benefits? So what is the decision that works best for me? and to be able to react to these changes. So if you make a decision to go into a certain line of business and doesn't seem to pan out, how can you react to it? Do we you know, put more time into sales and marketing? Do we bail? What is it that we do? And then also, um, as you can attest, I'm sure, to be an advisor to a management team. Make sure that you are there at the table and you're telling them if you see something that doesn't look right, 
this is the information I have, and this is what you, you know, what I want to add to it. Sometimes, I, and I always say this, the accounting table does, the accounting tail does not wag the dog, but it does, uh, and not everything has to go by the rules of accounting, but it will actually help guide in whatever the best decision is for, for a company and a management team. My fifth thing is this, accounting and business skills come in handy in personal life as well. So we want our students to know that what we learn in class, you can actually do for yourself. So we're doing budgets right now in my GB212 class, and we're talking about um, having enough money and enough cash. Let's look at how much the receipts are coming in. Let's look what's coming out. Do we have enough? And if we don't, what do we do? What did we say we were gonna do the other day? I am calling upon you. But when we said, um, what, if, we don't, if we don't have enough money, um, where would we go? Exactly, we could borrow from your uncle. Um, then there's the uh, bank we could go yeah, to, yeah, shareholders, right? We can come up with all these different things, but we talked about the, the best way, well, besides borrowing from your uncle, if it's interest-free, right? Um, and, and isn't expected to be returned for a very long time. We always say that the, the cheapest way to run a business is through operations, cash flow from operations. And then um, if you have to borrow money or you have to get a shareholder, there's always a cost to it. And you have to weigh those costs in that. Well, the same thing happens in your personal life. Um, am I going to buy a house or a car? Am I going to go on spring break or not? Um, at the end of the semester, spoiler alert for you, we're going to talk about time value of money. And that gets fun because we're finally using that calculator. And we're going to see like, okay, if you put, and then parents are telling your, 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 your children to do this, if you put $2,000 away every year, by the time you're 60, this is how much you're going to have, right? At a certain interest rate in that. So we kind of show them that. But we also um, show them enough to look at financial statements and understand, do I want to invest in this company? Do I want to go to this company? Um, is it a company I want to work with? So not only is it the culture, the fit, and the job, but also is the company in good shape for me to go work at. So with that being said, now I'm going to make you guys work a little bit. All right. I have some terms here on the left. Can anybody tell me what revenue is? Revenue is sales, the cost of the sales of the company. So whatever we sell, right? Um, we might sell. Yes. Sell just for ten dollars. That you must go. You must have gone to Disney World, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's how we sell it. That's, that's how say, I know, right? That's how we sell it for ten dollars. Exactly. I love Disney World, by the way, right? So yeah, a big Disney fan. But yes, we always buy our water because we're like, oh my god, ten dollars for a bottle of water. But it is. It's the revenue. It's the stuff coming in. So the amount that customers are going to pay us for goods or services. So it could be the water, or if you went to Disney, it could be the admission to the park. That could be it as well. Um, so that's our money coming in. But when everything comes in, money has to, and things have to go out too. So what are expenses? Cost of revenue. Cost of? It is the cost of revenue. That is, oh, I forgot to, you, you went for two questions, so. You get you get one too. All right. So cost. So it could be the cost. Hey, how you doing? Oh no worries. Come on in. So you say OPEX and CapEx. Yep. So you could have the cost of buying the water, right? The cost of buying the material to make the final product. Exactly. We do a whole thing of that in GB two twelve, right? And what it costs to pay the employees. That's <laughs> right. Exactly. Because if you don't pay them, no one's coming into work, right? That's why I say you don't run out of cash because you how many employees would come back the next day if you said, sorry, I can't pay you, right? Um, what other things could be expenses? Like overheads, you know, maybe in building. Uh, so yep. I mean, tons of, yeah. You got it. So anything in the building, um, anything, electricity, whatever it is, whatever your business is, that's going to be all the costs it takes to generate the revenue. So we, we talk about this. We start this out in, in our um, introductory classes. Now there's profit. We like to see that. What's profit? Do you know what profit is? It's left over on minus the expense of any revenue. You got it. Look at that. You you get and you get a prize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, there's cookies too. Please have cookies, okay? 
So the glass half full is when revenues are greater than expenses, we have profit. And sometimes, especially when the startups I worked in in the very beginning, sometimes expenses were greater than revenue, we had losses. So it's important to see, you hope that you have a long-term deal of profit, but I, on occasion there's a loss, isn't there? So yeah, we're like, hmm. But, right, right, and there's two different hats. I should have brought my hat in, but there's two different hats to wear, right? There's the, there's the um, what do you show your investors who are making profit? And also, without having two sets of books, you do this all within the realms of the law, right? Mm -hmm. you, you got my back on this. <laughs> that um, We do it, and then you have, um, for tax purposes, you want to show as low an income as possible, because then you pay the least amount of taxes. And what I tell the students is this. I don't get political. I just basically say, if a company gets to retain more of their profits, then they can reinvest that money into the company, grow their company, and then in the end, the governments will get more taxes. So it should be a win-win for everybody. That's what we hope. So, um, but the rules change and all those things. But yeah, there's this, you, you wear a different hat based on what you're trying to do for your company. Sometimes you have to wear both hats, right? Okay. So income statement, I, I kind of gave you that one because I was a double quicker here. Um, that's basically the financial statement that's going to summarize all of that. So you get to figure out at the top, here's the revenue at the top of the funnel, the expenses come out. And when you get to the bottom, you look for that profit, that profit or that, that positive number. And that's for a period in time. So how did I do this month, this quarter, this year? So it's, it's going to catch a time period that we wish to capture. What's cash flow? So we may, we may have income statement can be positive, but cash flow can be negative. So the cash in minus cash out gives us the cash flow. Right. So it's not always cash flow is positive just because income is positive. So that is a very good lesson to work. If I had, if I had, you get a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I, got I don't know if that's a prize. But after you see something now, no, no, I'm happy with once. <laughs> good job. No, absolutely. Cash flow. It's the fuel of the company, and and you you kind of uh, uh, got some of my slides on the other. It's the net of the receipts and payments. And as we all know in our checkbooks, right, or virtual checkbooks today, because not many people have a checkbook um, anymore, it is going to be, um, you want that number to be positive at the end, right? You get your paycheck, you pay some bills, you're hoping there's still money at the end. Um, if not, you got to find a way to get more money or cut the expenses. And that's what we talk about. Cash flow is really how we see how that all happens. So I'm going to show you an income statement here. So I made up um, Falcon Ice Cream Company. So Falcon Ice Cream Company um, is some revenue, some expenses, and they made $5,000 profit for the month of January. And I buried the lead on that one too, because this is, it's been a long week for Professor Wolf here, but uh, um, we, get the, we can make the money coming in from ice cream sales. Maybe we do shakes, cones, toppings, whatever we're selling. Um, if we wouldn't sell just cones, but maybe we do. Um, we have all that coming in. What would be expenses of my company, like of Falcon Ice Cream? Um, bills, rent, um, paying your employees, like taking out your labor costs and going with your meetings. Awesome. Now, did she just give that to you? Because <laughs> you no. deserve your own. <laughs> Here we go. Good job. Are you a student? Yes. Yes. What well, year are you? Um, I'm in high school. I'm a junior. No way. Yeah. You're, gonna, you're, good. you're good. You are good. I'm giving you my card. You're going to come find me. You are awesome. Great job. Are you taking accounting in high school? I'm taking business management and economics right now. God bless you. I mean, I'm telling you, I want to get this more in high school. Absolutely. Because um, whether you're going to go to college or you're not going to college, whatever it is, you need to know and understand these concepts. You may have a business. I think you're going to. You're an entrepreneur in the making. I actually already do. You do? <laughs> okay, wait a minute. I'm going to sit here and you're going <laughs> to. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. What do you do? Do you mind me asking? No, I don't mind. Um, I run a dessert business with my sister and her friends. Oh, so, <laughs> look at me. I'm trying to impress people with my cookies. You guys could have probably impressed us more. That's awesome. Good for you. Thank you. Oh my God. You should do cash your cards around here. Maybe we can use you. I forgot huh? them. I gave them all up today. Oh my goodness. I was like, thanks. 
Oh my God, that's awesome. Wow, so you're right, right? All the costs to make the ice creams. And as you mentioned, rent and is always insurance and taxes, right? You can answer that for anything, just so you know in school, insurance and taxes, you can say that for just about anything. You're always gonna have, have those things, right? But the cost of things, you're always gonna have wages, you're gonna have a building, um, maybe delivery vehicles and the like, and something called depreciation, which we're not gonna cover in this class. We're gonna keep it light. Okay, how did they do? Did they do okay? Or? Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, we have profit. We're happy, right? Okay. Now let's look at their cash flow. So they started out with twenty five thousand dollars. This feels like this month to me. <laughs> but uh, I'm only kidding. I'm an accountant. There's always a balance at the end. Um, so I have twenty five thousand dollars in cash. I collected fifteen thousand from my customers, and I have to pay twenty thousand out. So I started the month with 25 and I ended the month with 20. My net cash flow was negative $5,000. I compare it to my profit. You were onto something here. That was five positive $5,000. So my questions to you all is, how is their cash flow management? And the bonus question is, why is there a difference between the two statements? Just time, isn't it? What's that? Just timing. Timing? Of payments and creditors. And... So in other words, I might have to pay more people in July than I incurred some expenses in July? Yeah. There is a... For a number of months. You've got it. So yeah, that, is, that is good. That is the whole concept of accounting. And um, do you remember... Did, did you take TV on the whole Okay. Do you remember what the two types of accounting are? Um, cash versus accrual. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I never get so excited. That's okay. You remember, you remember that cash versus accrual accounting? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what that does is cash accounting means it's revenue when it comes in, it's it's um, expense when it goes out. But we do all these rules here, which I'm not going to make you learn today. Um, that um, allow you to capture. This is an economic picture of what's going on, and this is. Oops, sorry, backwards. This is an economic picture of what's going on. And this is what really happens to your bank account. And if, even though we spent a little more money than we earned, if this were negative, we'd be in a lot of trouble. We ran out of gas. And that's when we do a lot of budgeting and forecasting. We tell our students to keep aware of those things to make sure that we're, we're looking at it. Okay. <clears throat> so. We also talk about something called stakeholders. Has anybody heard that word? And what does it mean? Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you go and then I will have you. Stakeholders. Um, all the constituents which are associated with business will have a stake in the success of the business are impacted by the success or failure of the business. They get impacted either way. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you already got another one. Right, good job. You get a cookie. No. <laughs> um, absolutely. Any right. So when I was here um, way back when, uh, a lot of times we learned at the time was that, that and I think this was not just Bentley, but everywhere they said shareholders, yeah. make sure you take care of your shareholders, right? Yeah, traditionally, that was the only thing we wrote. Right. I, got a, I, I remember being at one publicly held company after I graduated, we were doing an, analyst estimates. We were talking and it was all about making the shareholders happy and keeping the analysts on expectations, which still happens to some extent. But now um, I, come, I went into the real world and I learned it's more than just them. And now we come back here and I'm teaching that it's more than just them, not because I came back to teach it, but that's what we teach here now is that there are so many other people that are impacted by the business, not just the investors, the shareholders, but what does your business do to society? Um, your employees are probably, in my mind, one of your biggest assets because they are the heart and soul, the brains, and the, and, and the oomph of your company. Um, you got to keep good with the regulators, right? The governments, and you got to pay your taxes and all that stuff. Yeah. You can't ever forget your customers, right? They're the ones who keep your business going. Also supplier, supply chain. And, and supply, supply right now, you're absolutely correct. The supply chain right now, you wanna have good relations with your suppliers. So you wanna keep them paid 
um, you know, as, as well as possible. You also want your customers to pay you as well. And, and your customers, you're their suppliers, so they're not going to want to do bad to you too. So it's a big circle that goes around. So all the people who stand to, to gain or lose. So this is what we usually ask our students in GB 112, um, which is our, our first class. Who are the stakeholders of Bentley University? All of us. <laughs> <laughs> parents. So yeah, students, absolutely. Parents, alumni. Students, parents, and alumni. So everybody in this room is a stakeholder, right? We want the, the best thing to possibly happen for the school and for our students and for its reputation. Um, what else would we have? The employees. The employees here. So, yep. Yeah. So um, from the, the um, staff who run the, the um, university to um, the faculty to um, all the other Service. services we have. We have landscapers. We have... Um, you know, we have the technology people. We have, a, a, it's like a little town here of people that we have, community campus police. Business community. Yeah. Business community. Business community. As long as I've been here, and it's been a long time as a student and now as a faculty member, it has been very important for Bentley to play nicely with the city of Waltham. And they have. And, um, you know, so to have a positive impact for the town. And I think uh, they do a lot. Um, if you go to the arena and go to the hockey games, they're in between the periods, they'll have um, the local teams, the little, the little kids are so cute, playing, you know, like three minutes of fame on the ice. So <laughs> they do a lot with the community and, um, and make sure that they include them. Well, not just that, because graduates are future employees. Absolutely. Between Boston and everywhere else around here. So. Oh my! Oh my goodness! Yeah, I love when my students stay here because then I get to see them still. <laughs> but uh, but they go everywhere and anywhere, and it's pretty incredible. So yes, absolutely. Um, you know, the students are our customers, and I tell them in class, I don't forget that that you're the customer. So you got to tell me, are you getting what you need? Are you not? Let's let's make sure it happens. Um, Bentley, and they certainly have creditors, right? Everybody does. So all the things to keep the university going. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of things. We talk a lot about this because what we do in a business decision, we have to make sure we can never please everybody. You go out to dinner with somebody, you go out with one person, you can make a decision. But if you go out with a dozen, <laughs> is everybody happy where you go? No, right? So it's always difficult. So you do the best you can to make sure that you help everybody possible. So I've been in companies where we've done um, stock raises, um, getting investors in. And, you know, we try to figure out, well, if we get an investor in, you can probably say this is going, if you're the employee, you're going to lose your stock option percentage, right? So what are we going to do for them? But what does it do for the other investors? What does it do for the community, the business and that? So we always look and check and make sure all of that is taken care of. So questions so far on the world of business and accounting. So I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of our new course. Um, so if any of you have, does anyone have first year students, their first semester here? Okay. So um, what we're trying to do is a, a couple of things. We're going to um, introduce the course is called financial reporting and analysis. And what we're going to do is we're going to introduce accounting to all majors. Everybody has to take it. So some people love it. Some people are like, I don't want to touch it, but we're going to um, make this a user-friendly class so that everybody can get something out of it based on the five you know, principles of accounting and teaching them how they can use these things uh, for good. So um, we talk about something called the accounting cycle, and we start with the foundation, building everything together, um, showing them how it works. We do not talk, believe it or not, first time in our life, we do not say the word debit or credit. So... I have to unwind <laughs> years. Yeah, I said, I said I'll have a swear jar. If I say debit or credit, I'll put a dollar in it, right? But um, no, we're going to teach them more because um, we're going to teach them what happens. We have this thing called the accounting equation. What happens to the, if with any transaction that you do in the company, something's going to happen. But the good thing about accounting is it all balances. It's very zen and you can kind of see what it does. But before you enter into doing something, you want to see how it impacts your financial statement. So we tell them that it tells a story. It's telling a story about the company. Um, what we are going to do is integrate a mock startup company that's going to be very um, campus centric. So not to bury the lead or anything, but um, 
it's going to pretty much um, start from the beginning where we have two founders. They're going to start a company up. They're going to um, have a bunch of transactions and we're going to follow it through the semester and have it tied to the concepts that we do. Um, we're going to get a lot more into analysis than we um, ever did. Um, so we're going to save a good, a good chunk of that class along the way when we're looking at different modules and things in the accounting cycle um, or different things like we're talking about that. Um, receivables in our customers or paying bills and that we'll look at ratios and figure out what does it mean for our business and relate it to real world companies like publicly held companies and that. And the goal of this is to um, make accounting fun and make it useful and show how this is going to help. And I think we can really do that. And um, a lot of people who have come into classes, anyone who's had GB 112 and 212 in here, right? So in all honesty, you won't hurt my feelings. Fun, not fun, scary, not so scary. What's your adjectives for it? I didn't think it was that bad. What did you hear before you came in? I heard it was terrible. <laughs> that killed me. It broke my heart. I mean, you're not breaking my heart now. No, I am bound to determine that that isn't going to happen. So, or going to eat my words, right? But it wasn't as bad, right? Yeah. Anything like, you know, oh, I got to go to the dentist to get a filling. I'm scared. Oh, that wasn't so bad afterwards. It, it wasn't, I, I don't want to equate me to the dentist, but um, we want to make this a little more pleasant than that. So, and your your experience, how was it? Um, same thing everyone tells you, but it's especially during my dissertation. Um, I personally, I loved Professor Casale, who's oh. on the uh, well, well, spoiler alert, she might be back teaching adjunct. Um, but yes, Professor Casali was my buddy. We both coordinated GB 112 and 212 the past two years, um, trying to make sure we, we kept everything on the rails throughout COVID and that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, but yeah, it, it all depends on the, the professor and the experience. And we've made sure in this semester coming up, we, everyone's going to be amped up and, uh, and going to try to keep up the spirit of Professor Casali <laughs> as well as myself. Uh, I just wanted to ask, is the mock startup company going to be the new, like, new project for the course? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, it's not necessarily because, um, you know, when we did the mock project, you know how we looked at a publicly held company? I made this up, but I couldn't, I wasn't that good. <laughs> so, um, so but it's going to, it's going to, that's our logo. Um, I'll give you the spoiler alert. It's called Fal Falcon Pizza. One of our students designed the logo. Um, I actually kind of dreamed up some of the things with one of our students helped me build some of this in, in the slide decks and that. So um, we're going to um, have a mock startup company that's going to start all throughout the semester. So um, at the very beginning, two founders, Kelly and Vivek, are going to come. Those are my former grad assistants. So everybody's got a name in my project. Um, that we're going to set up the business. So they're going to put some money into it. They're going to go for a bank loan. Then I think they're going to get some rental space, buy some equipment. Uh, they, their first sale is to President Kreit. <laughs> he liked that we involved him. He, he paid right away. He was a good payer. <laughs> I, I know not to make him the delinquent payer, right? <laughs> so uh, President Kreit paid. Um, we're going to open up and we're going to sell to um, our customers at our restaurant. Then we're going to expand the business. So um, one of my um, ingenious students, Victor, comes in. He has an idea for a new distribution channel. We're going to go out and we're going to sell to other colleges and universities because they've heard how good our pizza is. So um, our department chair works for Bryant. So Bryant bought some pizza and I made sure they paid on time. <laughs> but I made Babson pay really late and delinquent. So there's <laughs> a little accounting humor joke there. Um, so we have fun with it. But what we've done is I've dumped a lot of the stuff into. Um, we have an educator license for QuickBooks. I'm not going to make the students do QuickBooks. If anyone wants to learn it, I'm all in. The students can come and I would show them. It's a great tool to have. You can be QuickBooks certified and probably get jobs on the side to do it. And some of my startups use QuickBooks for quite a long time. But what we want to do is just show them that it's not just sitting there writing things down, that everything you do gets loaded in. And I have more of these slides than just this, but this is what you get. You get an income statement and Falcon Pizza is making a profit so far. So that's good. 
So this is what we're going to kind of do. So instead of this Falcon pizza is going to be kind of throughout. We talk about receivables. Let's look who, who the people are paying are. We're going to talk about inventory. You remember FIFO and LIFO, right? So we're going to look at that. What, what should we choose? Should we do our pizza FIFO? Should we do our pizza LIFO? There's a lot of things that, that um, we're going to do and take those concepts, but have a little more fun with it. And students are going to kind of be the consultants. We're also, we, as you know, we did um, a 10K project before, but we're going to amp that up a little more. And uh, we're going to look at not just the financials of the 10K, but we're also going to, um, I have a problem with my jump drive, forgive me. Um, we're going to um, not only look at the financial part of it, but how the financials fit with all the other dialogue. These things are 200 pages long sometimes. And we're going to show students, don't be afraid by it. Look at what information. There are a lot, aren't they? <laughs> I'm not going to make them read it all. But um, we're going to look at pieces of this in class, like we have Apple here. Maybe we'll look at the ratios and we'll see how is Apple doing. Everybody's heard of Apple. A lot of people know how and use their products. But then our course project will go into a 10K of our choice with a little more expended analysis, a little more ratios and the like. So we want to use Excel so that uh, the students can do a little more analysis and um, come up with their own conclusions, what they think from the numbers, from what they read, from what they can research about the company. And then we'll pull it into the last part of our class to kind of go over and uh, make things happen. So that's what we've been doing. Um, we wanna continually innovate. We wanna continually make sure students have the tools that they need to succeed out in the business world. So from there, Flex and I ask if there are any questions from the audience, because you've all been pretty good. Awesome class. <laughs> Is there anything I can uh, answer for you about Bentley, about our classes? I'm giving you an example of accounting, but, uh, and I, I for you some of my student experts here. <laughs> Um, so I heard they're changing like a lot of the curriculum for the incoming freshmen, um, possibly so that it's easier for them to double major. Is that why they're doing it? That is a lot of why they're doing it. So GB 112 and 212, which were the two accounting classes upperclassmen took, um, got split because they're a good chunk of accounting and finance. So now accounting has one course, finance has the other. Mm -hmm. And we've expanded each accounting and finance. If, and, and uh, Professor Gray is the vice chair, so she can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that we've done this so we can expand more offerings and opportunities within both departments. It, it also, um, our previous curriculum was rather unforgiving. So if you if you made a mistake in taking the wrong class in the wrong order, it, it was more difficult. And we're trying to add increased flexibility for students so that you can perhaps try something and go, that's not exactly what I want to do. And, have a lower cost of switching it um, if that were the and it allows us to be a little more innovative and develop some really cool new classes too. I will say that, and that's throughout uh, both the business and arts and science departments. Yeah, some pretty interesting things that are getting developed. So stay tuned, right? Um, other questions. Um, I know that like you might not know this just because you don't do emissions, but like what sort of um, high school math classes does Bentley look for like for the community students? Uh, do you know that question? <laughs> That's a great question. I'd be happy to um, connect more with our admissions team just to okay. see. I don't have particular questions like course work. Yeah. I would think, uh, well, I'll t I, I mean, I'm gonna, when I get in here, I just basically <laughs> had like algebra, geometry, math. I didn't have calculus. I took calculus when I was here, but if you've had that, I believe the way it works is you would just move to the next level of math. So, so as far as you've gone, we're not going to make you do it over again. You're going to kind of move further in it. So what do you What are you thinking of? What's your areas of interest? Since you're an entrepreneur, you've got a lot of areas. Um, I don't know. Both my parents were finance majors here at my school. You're a Falcon. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. welcome! That's yeah. awesome. Nine six too long ago. Oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, earlier, <laughs> way long ago. <laughs> that's okay. Oh my god, that's awesome. So maybe like finance, marketing, or like entrepreneurialism. Awesome. Those are like categories right now. There are a lot of students. There are a lot of students that have businesses. I talked to them a lot. Um, one of my students this summer, we did a little model. Um, he did. He had a business where they they called it luggers, and they basically lugged people's um, beachwear in their 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 stuff their chairs and all that stuff um on the jersey shore 
to the beaches. And they actually made some pretty decent money doing it, but they were trying to figure out, are we profitable and what's going on? Um, I've had students that, that, I mean, there's, there's tons of business. Another student had a sneaker business and that. So your, your cake business, I had someone had a cosmetics business. So um, lots of entrepreneurs here. I'd love to see even more entrepreneurs kind of band together and, and do things and work together here. I'd love to see us like, you know, kind of get that advantage over Babs in one of these days. <laughs> um, so how is business analytics weaved into the course, the courses that the students take? And do some students focus more on it than others? Or is there a major dedicated to that? Just I'm gonna let <laughs> my technology expert. I know some of the answers, but you're gonna get a better answer. <laughs> uh, we do have an undergraduate major in analytics. It is headquartered in our math department, so it is a math intensive major. There's also a minor. Uh, that would combine nicely with the finance accounting uh, with, with um, so, but we also do put analytics in all our classes. Um, we weave it in slowly. So if you're starting with you know, QuickBooks and Excel and doing simple analytics and ratios in, in this freshman sophomore level class. Um, by senior level, uh, we have what, what the course I teach is a senior level course, one of them. And uh, we have a major analytics project. We are, we are working with a data set that is in excess of 2 million rows. Um, so learning to deal with large data sets and figure out the importance of asking the right question, because that's what it all comes down to. And so something like Tableau, you mentioned that and all the slides, would that be not until senior year they would get something like that, exposure to that, or even before that? We're currently developing a, um, so in the accounting department, we have uh, an accounting and information systems honor society called Data Alpha Psi, mm -hmm. and we are developing a special seminar for them that will be launched in the spring. Um, and that one, they'll get a certificate at the end, I think that's the plan, but it'll be like a Saturday thing, so it's an extra course. Uh, and I believe Tableau is going to be a major part of that. It's so under the map. But I think uh, we have Tableau with some of our sophomore level courses now. Um, our intermediate accounting has Tableau and also a um, Python project that the students actually really like. Uh, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, accountants, they won't want to learn coding, but they really enjoy it. Thank you. I don't know this question or suggestion. Um, so something like a business structure, say so if, if you take Apple as a company, how is it globally structured? Because that has so much accounting implication, that's an intercompany transaction and, and other things, the distribution centers and inventory accounting and things like that. I don't know which code, maybe AC 115 may be an overkill because it's a freshman company. Right. But is that in the curriculum from in, in accounting, if you were talking, yeah, if you were talking um, like more intercompany transactions, consolidations, distribution, foreign currency, um, that'd be more in our advanced accounting course. So uh, we would talk about it existing. I always tell them I'm going to tell you enough to be dangerous in AC 115 or GB 112 and 212. You don't have to know the pronouncements. Um, when you get more into the, the accounting field, that's where you learn some of those things and why we do but when we teach, we do teach them those things. They just don't know we're teaching you this pronouncement or that. So um, it would be more that, but for um, international students or for anyone who's thinking about global companies, we want to talk a lot about that people deal in different currencies and there could be gains and losses that you have from trading in those currencies. Um, and that you have to, um, you know, kind of roll up a lot of companies. That, that would probably definitely be more beyond the scope of that. With uh, 20, 30 years experience when they try to construct a solution, the automation of accounting for the entire enterprise. Right. Uh, they struggle to come up with the right structure in which this has to be positioned to exactly. be accurate. So that's what right. I'm asking. You, yeah, you have to have that. Yeah. And it, it's funny because I took advanced accounting here and I'm like, I'll never do consolidations or international. I, I, I don't know if I like this. Guess what? Almost every job I had had something about that, and then I loved it, right? So it is it, it is everywhere. You have to know how all those things work and interact. Absolutely. Do you have a, do you consolidate? Uh, I do. Yeah. So, yep. So it happens, it's just about anywhere you go. But I was going to say, I think what you're talking about is more like a business processes type of thing. Yeah. Which I mean, might you're be starting with the structure and why. Like, I know in the graduate program, uh -huh. yeah. foundation. I, I don't see that. 
I have people with 20, 30 years experience. They struggle to do that. And most of the automations the big companies do, what they call mm -hmm. fancy term global transformation projects, they go wrong. They fail so, to be the world. I may not look it, but I'm pretty old. I know <laughs> people that are 20, 30 years in, um, <laughs> 20, 30 years in, a lot of that business process stuff was not taught as you were going. Yeah. 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 I don't know the study so, on that. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's taught a lot more now. Yeah. We have a department called the Information and Process Management Department. Uh, one of the courses are required from that department, and business process is what they teach. We also, in the accounting department, have a course, um, AC 340. I can't think of the name of it right now, sorry, but it is the business idea. process. And so then uh, I teach IT audit, and by the time we get to IT audit, we're putting together a grocery store. So I, I do something similar with what Len does. We have a grocery store with a distribution center and, and multiple vendors. They have to tie in, they get to figure out what the process and, and the information flows will be. Okay. So, uh, okay. going back to your statement about accounting as the language of business, I know as a CPA, I'm sure you've seen this. When you work in public accounting, a lot of what you end up doing, which you don't realize when you're going through your undergrad, is business process mapping analysis and figuring out how everything flows so yeah. i teach a fraud class and we just went over this um fraud way back from the 80s called crazy eddie and everything went wrong again, <laughs> right <laughs> and everything yeah. went wrong on it and we it's a great because it has every bit of fraud but how many internal controls and processes weren't in place so we educate everyone on what not to do and what to look for um when, when you're working in companies and that so so it's a lot of fun. So we, we have fun all the way around here. And that's not just in accounting and in in, in in business, but throughout the university. So um Lynn, I was gonna say we have time for like one, one more, more question. question. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Yes. I'm just um there's a computer information systems major, is that right? Yes. And is that is that like going in a different direction than accounting? Like the audit takes accounting and is looking or thinking about that, but it's not, you uh, can, well, with the new curriculum, you can kind of mix and match, like you could double major, you could major in minor. Uh, we have an accounting major called Information Systems Audit and Control, which is very on the techie side with technology and computers and that. Um, it can border on cybersecurity too, right? And, and risk and insurance. Yeah. As well. So we have a lot of things. So a lot of things can touch different departments, but the way this new curriculum is working is that they can actually kind of design, plug and play what their interests are as they find them. Hey, that's something I want to minor in. Hey, that's, uh, I think this is what I'll major in and kind of roll from there. So what do they do with computer information systems? CIS is more of a programming uh, background. I mean, there there is the infrastructure and things like that, but it is more focused on programming. So uh, you look at what outcome you want. You know, if you want to become a, a computer programmer or a cybersecurity specialist, or do you want to become a business professional who's perhaps a systems integrator? And uh, definitely can mix and match to get the skills. Uh, but CIS will give you more of the programming technical skills, the deeper technical skills. So is that useful to someone who wants to be an accountant? Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> right. The more technology you can have probably in almost anything. Um, yeah, the better. CIS is our most popular minor on campus. And I have heard many of the large uh, employers say that their perfect hire is an accounting major with CIS minor. So it's a very popular. <clears throat> and like you were saying, everything is automated as far as accounting nowadays. So it's really more about being able to delve into it and, as you said, ask the right question and being able to understand the software you're working with and program and be able to develop that question within the program is really key. Yeah, it's there's so much information that you have to figure out what is it you're going to use, what are you trying to solve, right? And and the tools help you kind of sort that out a little bit, but it still takes no matter how many tools you have, it takes a, a human brain and and teams to kind of figure out. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate you coming in on a Friday afternoon to my class. Um, I have some, if you have any questions, I didn't put it on my slide deck this year, but um, you can find me at lwolf, L-W-O-L-F at bentley.edu. I'm in the accounting department at Damien. Come see me anytime. I'll give you a card. So if you need anything, <laughs> absolutely. Um, 
you have any questions or anything with Bentley, this alum would be glad to help you out. For any parents of the thank you. And everyone is also yeah. welcome to. So nobody, yeah. everybody participated everyone here. So <laughs> come get four right here. We, we had a little game with it. I made somebody work for it, but you all work for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> 